every one of us in, in, the, in the area of our soul, we, we, we understand that our spirit has been born again. Amen? Amen? I've been born again by the Spirit of God. I'm a new creation. Hallelujah. I'm a brand new person. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But the eyes of my understanding, this one part of me, the spirit that's in me, that God has already given to me, the Bible says He's given to me wisdom. He's already given to me righteousness, sanctification. These things are where? They're in my spirit. They've been given to me by the Holy Spirit. But God wants that to be transferred into my mind, my will, and my emotions so that I can see what God wants me to see. That He's already deposited on the inside of me. Okay, so that's really what it's talking about in this specific area. And uh, I, I want to make sure, I'm going to spend just most of the time on this message is today just on these few scriptures. Okay, so let's talk about this word in verse 18 where it talks about understanding. Most of us have the concept, we understand eyes have to do with seeing. Amen? Now, the seeing process doesn't necessarily mean the physical seeing, but it also means comprehending. Amen. Okay? It also means to experience. How many here understand that? Because the Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. So the tasting and the seeing is an experience. And when we say, oh, I see, it doesn't mean we see something physically per se. It means that we're making a reference that, oh, now I get it. Now I comprehend it. Okay? Well, God's trying to get us as believers to comprehend something in our understanding. Now, the word understanding means deep thought. By implication, it's exercise. Okay? So your mind has an exercise. By implication, when it's saying exercise, it means something that your mind is doing properly in, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, that you're thinking the right way, you're thinking the way God wants you to think, you're not thinking wrong. Amen? You're taking authority over the wrong, you're casting down imaginations, and anything that is highly exalting itself and challenging the very virtue, the very knowledge of the authority of God's Word in your life, okay? And there's a lot of things that will do that, okay? There are a lot of things in the text that will come into your life that will be challenged by your thinking sometimes. And that thinking isn't necessarily your own. Some of it you picked up from false doctrine. Mm -hmm. Somebody taught you something. You know, we already talked about rumor. You know, so we all get a preconceived idea. Somebody says, somebody says, and then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, everybody's trying to investigate what somebody else said. And I told you, you know, I said, you know what, I, 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 when, I, when I went to court and I, I got to listen, you, most of you know with the situation with Gabe, you know, where he got his head, you know, it was a home invasion back over a year ago, back in, in September of 2011, that there was a home invasion, somebody beat him, uh, and, and so... Finally, they arrested the guy, and the court date was last Wednesday. So I had I had a really good time, got the experience listening to the judge, the prosecuting attorney, and 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 the the lawyer that was that was standing there, the court appoint court appointed uh, attorney that was there in, in, in behalf of the one that committed the crime, and got to listen to a lot of good conversation, and and I was learning some things spiritually, because I kept hearing over and over again, I object, that's hearsay. I object. That's hearsay. <laughs> you know, and and, and 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 then a lot of times the witnesses would come up and say and say, well, this is what happened. Well, how do you know it happened? Because so and so told me it happened. No, I want to know what you saw. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I want to know what you heard. Don't tell us what anybody else saw or what you said they saw. We want to hear what you saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very important. And I said, Lord, you know, maybe we should start getting a little bit more strict on that. And I said, did you hear that? Or did you hear somebody else that said they heard that? Amen. All right. Boy, when we put out some fires right away. Okay. And so very important for us to understand that. And I thought it was a really a spiritual principle because we already talked about that back about five, six weeks ago about Philippians chapter 4, things that are true, honest, just, lovely, you know, worthy of praise, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, and you ain't going to say it if you don't think it. Right? Yeah. So you're not going to do it because it's going to be based on hearsay. Okay? So even with the Word, a lot of times we get indoctrinated with wrong thinking. Somebody says, well, and, and, and I've had this happen. Somebody would tell me, I, I remember in my early days when I first started off and started trying to get involved with the ministry, you know, I would quote other ministers what they said from the Word. Mm -hmm. 
yep. instead of really looking at the context myself. Yep. And then somebody would challenge me, say, well, that's not exactly what that scripture says. I say, no, 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 that, that preacher wouldn't lie. <laughs> that minister wouldn't lie. You know, I, I know the preacher that preached that message. He wouldn't lie. Well, maybe you heard from somebody else who thought it was true. Come on. Uh, you know, so all of a sudden it's carried down from one one pre preacher to another preacher to another preacher, and no one researched it. And finally, one person decided to research it. They looked at it and they confronted me, said it's not true. And I said, Well, I have to look at it. And I looked and I said, You're right. Here's it. I guess I, 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 I'm wrong. <laughs> oh no. I stuttered when I said that because that's what you're supposed to do. You know, uh, I'm wrong. Everybody say it. I'm, I'm wrong. wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm wrong. When you are, especially. Yeah. But some preachers have to rewrite all their books. <laughs> so they can't say they're wrong. they got to keep preaching the same error. It's sad, but it's true. I've seen it happen. Yeah. You know, where all of a sudden, you know, there's a, you know, they just won't write any more books on that topic, but, you know, they, they, they just, oh, well, I guess I'll stay away from that one for a while. That's too hot. Yeah. The same thing's true in everything that you think, and, and I say that because last week we talked about wind and wave of doctrines. We talked about we talked about it even during the in, in James when we're doing the study of James. By the way, another plug for for Thursday nights when we don't have prayer. We're on the book of James, and it's a fun book. Amen. Oh yeah, we're having a blast in the book of James. Yeah, jamming through James. I love it. Yeah, and, and so we're just having a good time through the book of James. But here, understanding is deep thought, implicating exercise, having your senses exercise. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, to discern what? Good and evil. Now I want you to see in this one scripture, from the original Greek, this is the word right here, and this is the word that we're looking at for the word understanding. And I want you to see this because I, you know, I want you to see it. And that's, a, that's another reason why I put this up here. You know, I could do it without all this up here, but I want you to see where I'm getting my information. Because I'm not just pulling up and say, this is what I believe the definition of this is. This is where I get my information, okay? So you're seeing it right up there. You're seeing where I'm going. I'm going to the Strong's. The Strong's gives you different definitions or different ideas that are used and, and, and interchanged as, as far as King James, if you have a King James Version, because a lot of the Strong's goes along with the King James Version. So it'll give you different words that are used in the King James, English words used down there at the bottom in the King James Version. The word mind is used, the word understanding, and the word imagination is also used. It tells you how many times it's used in the King James Version, the same Greek word. Okay, just so when you see this as I, I bring it up, that's what we're looking at. Okay, and then it does a comparison. And then it does, what we have is also Vines expository. When, when E.W. Vines takes it, he magnifies the meaning, does a study of that specific word. Well, in his whole uh, definition here, as we look at this, we look at the word imagination. Now, see the number, it's 1271. This is how I do it, okay? And we go all the way down. I'm not going to go to 3053 because that's not the Greek word. So we go all the way down to 1271. Okay? This is what it says. Strictly, this word for understanding, strictly a thinking over. It denotes the faculty of thinking, then of knowing. Hence, the understanding and in general, the mind. And so the faculty and so. And this is it, the faculty of moral reflection, which is referring to character, okay? So the end result in this, and what you hear me teach a lot about, is all about character. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that character is all defined by what you allow ha to happen inside of your thinking, mm -hmm. inside of your mental areas, and, and what you allow as far as imagination. So imagination itself is not evil. It's what you're creating an image for. That's right. Okay? Because there's real images. Okay? You've been made in the image of God. Okay? And God wants you to be conformed to His, the image of His Son. So, that, so to use your imagination to create an image to be like Christ is not wrong. Amen? Right. To reflect his character, a faculty of moral reflection. Okay? So to 
follow after the Beatitudes, for example, and to understand, you know, the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It goes on and gives promises with every one of these moral characters, these characteristics that God wants you to take and create an image of in your mind, okay? An image of victory. We talked about victory today. We talked about the power of God working in your life. There's nothing wrong with you having that image of God's power working in your life. As a matter of fact, it'll make a difference in you. I'm not talking new age. It may sound like new age. But that's because New Age stole it from the Word, and then they leave the Christ part out. Yeah. 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 Okay? They leave Christos, anointing, out of this whole concept. Positive thinking is still a truth that's talked about in the Word, but it lacks when it doesn't have the Holy Spirit anointing the Christos, Christ, in it. That's right. Okay? Yes. That's where it gets wrong, okay? And what does it do? It creates a different image. Let me share with you the image that it creates. When it goes off and away from Christ, it always creates pride. Right. Yeah. Yep. The end result is I, me, myself, I did this. My power has got me this well. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. I've done this by myself. No one's helped me. Come on. Mm -hmm. I've built it. I've done it. Me, myself, and I, the great almighty three. <laughs> We're triune beings. Amen? Yeah, I don't believe in the Trinity. It's me, myself, and I. You know. And we're a powerful team. So don't mess with the three of us. <laughs> and it's amazing how people, you know, will will begin to build this this esteem the wrong way and not understand the characteristics of God in their life. So here it's thinking over, working with the things that God has given you based on the scripture and understanding how that works. Now it's also defined as mind. Okay, if we were to go back. And look at that definition again from the Strong's. You can see the word is also defined as the mind. It also has to do with thought, okay? And uh, we're going to look at that in a minute here, and I'm going to share some, some, some other uh, examples in the Scripture. Uh, we looked at this back in the beginning of the te teaching. We looked at this word called thought. Remember, there's many definitions for the word thought, okay? And if you look at the word thought, it also deals with the imagination. It deals with reasoning, okay? But today we're looking at one specific area, and here it is, imagination. Here's the word, mind. Mind, okay? If you remember in the Scripture, the book of Romans, it talks about the mind of the flesh and the mind of the spirit. Amen? Romans chapter 8. The mind of the flesh... The mind of the spirit. The mind of the flesh. The mind of the spirit. I have two minds? Well, sounds like I do. My flesh has a mind. And my spirit has a mind. The Bible says, according to the book of Corinthians, I have the mind of Christ. But it also says that I have to let this mind be in me. Which was also in Christ Jesus. It also says to be renewed in the spirit of my mind. But if you mind the flesh, it says in the book of Romans chapter 8, those that mind the things of the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But those that mind the things of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life, life everlasting. So, we see the two minds. That's what the Bible talks about, not to be double-minded. In other words, don't let both minds try to rule you. You've got a purpose to let the mind of Christ be the one that rules and dictates what's going on in your life. That's right. Okay, so this is mind in the positive area that we're talking about today based on dianoa in this specific Greek word. This is with a good significance used by the faculty that is working by the Holy Ghost, the faculty renewed by the Holy Spirit. And we have a lot of scriptures that we can look at here. I'll, look at, I'll bring up a few. And I want you to see this because a lot of people don't really even see that this is here. They use the word understanding or they use the word imagination, but they don't understand that it's still in the scripture. This is used in all four Gospels. It's spoken of in all four Gospels, but I want you to see verse 37 of Matthew chapter 22. It says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God 
with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. mind. That word mind is the same Greek word that we're looking at for the word understanding, also imagination. Amen. Oh, wait a minute. So therefore, with all of my imaginations, I should be worshiping the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That means no imagination should be anything that is contrary to that which gives glory to God. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts. The word exalt means to put a challenge on. You not understand what the challenge is? Anybody here ever been challenged before? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. The whole nine yards. We used to play. You know, we used to play certain games. You know, where we challenge each other because you know we thought maybe they would play Scrabble. Anybody ever play Scrabble? Yeah. I was good at making words up. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and if you play by, you know, they have the rules that you know, well, you can try to make a word up, or you can bluff somebody and make them think you're making a name up, and it's really a name. So I play with people. <laughs> okay. And so I'd say, you know, O E, a whirlwind. That's what it means. And I put it up there. And I look at him. Is that a real word? I say, uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to challenge me? <laughs> Come on. And they cha if they challenge and lose, they had to skip the turn. My my. Well, good for me, bad for them, right? You know. So I get them on a few, or they were real words, and then I go ahead and make up a word, and make it sound really good. Is that a real word? You can challenge me. <laughs> now the Bible tells us what's real and what's not real. That's a good thing. Amen? So does the dictionary. But guess what? You can't use the dictionary when you're playing Scrabble. Amen? Amen. You can't use the dictionary. If you got to know if it's in there or not. You know? So, I, I mean, when I first used to get to Scrabble, man, I go through that Scrabble. Anybody ever have a Scrabble dictionary? They have the <laughs> Scrabble dictionary. And I would, I would study the dictionary. <laughs> Refresh my mind. I had... Words underlined that I, I want to get that word today. If I could get that one, I know somebody will challenge me. Okay? So you all know as a teacher, that's kind of, you know, part of the characteristics of me being a teacher is to look for something that somebody else is going to say, wait, I don't think that's true. <laughs> Amen? But with the word, see, we need, and, and the same thing is true because if you, if you challenge me, you're challenging me based on the, the fact that you're going to go ahead and look, to, look at the truth. Right? The truth was the Scrabble Dictionary. That was the source of truth as far as that goes. But our source of truth is what? The Word of God. Amen? So anything that challenges or exalts, the word exalt, where it says in, in, in Corinthians, where it says exalts itself against the knowledge of God, it literally means anything that challenges the integrity of God's Word. And you sense it. And so somebody says something and you say, wait, that's challenging God's Word. Because it's contrary to some other scriptures that I know. Come on. Mm -hmm. And then you say to the you say to the thought, to the imagination that's coming your way, I challenge you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I challenge you. Well the Bible says to test every spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. To see whether it be of God or not. So I'm challenging that word. And I go back and I go before and I get before the Holy Ghost and I pray and then I get in the word. And I say, God, I gotta see if this is true or not, because it's coming to my imagination. And if it's not true and doesn't stand to the integrity of God's word, the Bible says, Cast it down. Hallelujah. Take authority over it. Don't let it rule your thinking. Thank you. you know? Doctor says you're not going to live for more than one year. I said, oh, I challenge that. Yes. I believe it. God said that I live long and prosper. I'm honored my parents. I'm going to live long. Amen. I'm, I'm trusting in the Word. I'm going to live long. Psalms 91 gives me, i got lots of promises that I'm going to live long. In the Word of God, He'll satisfy me with long life. Praise God. That's contrary. And I'm not done with what God called me to do yet. Yeah. On top of all the other things. So that is something I challenge because it does not coincide with the Word. Amen. Are you with me so far? i got to get through this opening. <laughs> my third opening. <laughs> my mind. With a good significance, the faculty renewed by the Holy Ghost. So hear this word here. It says, with all your mind. Very important. 
Same word that we've been talking about with all your understanding, with all your imagination. Okay, that's spoken of in every gospel. So I'm not going to go through every one. I don't have them all down. Hebrews 8.10 For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. Praise God. God says he, he, he put his laws into your imagination, your mind, and your understanding. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And I'll write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they will be to me a people. Hallelujah. How many here are the people of God? Yes. We're the people of God. We're called by His name. Amen. Yes. We've been washed in the blood and delivered from shame. Glory yes. to God. That's Amen. What the Word of God declares. Okay? Hebrews 10, 16. I know I'm getting excited. That's okay. We can do that with the Word. Amen. Yes. Hebrews 10, 16 says, This is the covenant that I will make with them. Again, a repeat of what we already read from 8.10. Okay? So here it is. So I just want you to see it's, it's over and over again. Now here's a really good one. As a matter of fact, we, we did this one last week. But I'm going to read it to you because it's here. Because we're talking about the same. This is the same Greek word. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Wow. Be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Two things here I want to I want to bring out to you. Number one, the loins of your mind. We talked about this last week, so I'm not going to labor it a whole lot because I've only got two minutes left. <laughs> but listen to me very carefully. <laughs> the word for loins means that which that that which has procreative power. Speaking of, you know, the ability to, to bring forth life. Yeah. That's what loins is. Now it's saying that which is from the mind, because your mind has a lot of power. How many here know? You, you know, you realize your mind, your, and your imagination, you know, and, and that's spoken of in the, book of, uh, in, the, in the book of Genesis where they had the Tower of Babel. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. It got God's attention, didn't it? Why did it get God's attention? Because of their imagination. Their mind, and then their confession. But the confession always comes as a result of what they were thinking. God says, I've got to stop this, because they all agree in their mind as touching this thing, and they speak it, and therefore, I've got to stop this, this area, and I've got to bring confusion, and, and, and I've got to stop this power of agreement, because there's nothing that could be withheld from them because of the power of their... because of the power of imagination. God didn't say, I'm going to take away the power of their imagination. That's right. I want you to hear that. Yeah. It's still there. God never took away the power of imagination. All he did was he, he brought something in so that they would be confused. Amen. You know the devil does the same thing to us? Yeah. Yeah. He says, well, I can't get him one way, so I'll get him another way. What is it? Strife. Bitterness. Yep. Envy. Those three areas, bitter, envy, and strife. Bitter, envy, and strife. Everybody say it. Bitter, envy, and strife. Oh, my. That's why we pray by it. It's worse than lions, tigers, and bears, isn't it? Bitter, envy, because it says in James, well, there's bitter, envy, and strife, there is what? Every evil word. Wow. Wow, because see, the devil's trying to do what he, what, what God did in battle. The devil does to believers what confusion, envy, and strife. Yeah. And he stops and puts confusion in your mind because it says, well, there's bitter envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil word. Mm -hmm. So he stops that what God wants to do in your life because you allow bitter envy and strife to enter in. The devil will work on you in those three areas to hinder you from seeing what God wants to work His image and His manifestation to work in your life. Are you getting anything out of this yet? Yeah. I'm almost done. First John 5.20 And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding. Oh, there it is. The same word, same Greek word for mind or imagination. That we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. 
This is the true God and eternal life. Praise God. So here, God, God wants us. He doesn't want us to be ignorant, ignorant of the truth. He wants us to know the truth. And what does the Bible say about knowing it? You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So to know or have knowledge based on what we already talked about in the Scripture, we'll go back to the opening Scripture here that I've been using as far as our reference goes. To know, it says that we may know what God has freely given to us. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling. Everybody say no. 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 So here's what happens. Give you a summary. First we know intuitively God speaks into our spirit. Second we know and we understand mentally. When used properly, listen to me very carefully, the mind is the monitor of the spirit and the soul. Okay? The mind is a monitor of the spirit and the soul. And I say both. Okay? The Holy Spirit enables, enables our spirit. Notice I have capital S and small s. Small s is your spirit. Holy Spirit enables our spirit to know. Then, if you remember back about five weeks ago, we talked about conscience. Our Conscience, which is the voice of the human spirit, relays to our understanding, to our mind. In other words, it starts giving us the information. It comes, the image comes to our mind, okay? And I can give you an image, I can give you something and it will help you, okay? If I give you something you want to know how somebody looks, and I give you a picture of that person, now you know who that person is. Exactly. You know, I might say a name, okay, and because, you know, maybe you haven't really seen that person or you haven't put their name with the image, uh, then when I finally show you the image of that person, all of a sudden you say, oh yeah, I know that guy. <laughs> okay? Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? Anybody ever have a hard time with trying to get somebody's name together? Yes. And somebody shows you a picture and says, Oh, that's who that is. Amen. Yes. What does it do? It brings a revelation to you. It brings understanding to you. Now you can place the name with the person and you know who it is. You know what kind of character that person might be or whatever it may be. Oh, yeah, I know they got really good. Okay. And, and, and so, but anyways, that, that's how the conscience begins to work. It, it gives you the information. It, it, it hands you the smartphone, so to say. You know, with the image on it. With the picture, right? Yeah. Or the camera. Well, if you want to use camera, you want to be, you know, or the film. Way back. Anybody know what film is? <laughs> Did it. Goes back a little ways. They used to have something in cameras called film. Yeah. <laughs> now they don't have film shops anymore, do they? So a lot of people, you know, the younger generation don't even know he talked about film anymore. What's that? Come on. Are you with me so far? But it's still the whole concept of the image, the picture, getting through to us. I hope you're getting the picture right now. Amen. I, I'm, I'm trying to get through this. Holy Spirit enables our conscience relates to our understanding the mind. This is the projection process. And then the mind causes our, our outward man to know and understand. When I say our outward man, I'm not just talking about the flesh. I'm talking about your will and your emotions as well. That's right. Okay? So the mind causes your outward man to understand. Then we go on. These all work together like a handshake. They all agree. One goes to one, the other one goes to the other. Before you know it, you got manifestation. One thing may be a healing. Maybe you needed a healing from God. All of a sudden you see it. Oh, I see. I see God did pay the price for me. I see I received it. Maybe it's salvation. Oh, I see Jesus did pay the price for me. I see.